Yeah. Hi, I'm Mel. I'm here with Rob and Annie from my studio to present our Women's Property Initiatives Older Women's Housing Project. Rob Hillman's going to do a quick intro. So older women are the fastest growing cohort of people experiencing homelessness in Australia. And it's been estimated that over 400,000 women over the age of 45 in this country are at risk of homelessness. This is due to many long-term systemic factors such as persistent wage gaps, unpaid caregiving, family and domestic violence, underpayment in female dominated industries, gender and age discrimination in the workplace and inequity of superannuation. This is an ongoing issue that's only been exacerbated by the effects of the pandemic. And without investment in more social housing, preventative projects such, a, uh, such as this, we're reaching a tipping point. Nationally, rental prices have increased by 8% in the last year, um, with the regions and outer suburbs being hit the hardest. This project caters for older women who have some savings, um, but are not in a position to obtain home ownership. These women are locked into the private rental market, depleting their savings whilst often living within insecure rental arrangements. Thanks, Tilly. So this is the Beaconsfield pilot project. It's a very humble architectural project, but we hope it will have big ambitions beyond the site. It's located on Bunurong country, and we'd like to acknowledge the Bunurong people as the traditional owners of this land. In Beaconsfield, on the outskirts of Melbourne. And while a long way out, this location was selected for its affordability and its connection and access to services and amenity with a train station and activity centres all within walking distance. The brief was for four single storey, two bedroom units, each with their own car space. And the apartments have been designed to NDIS improved livability standards. The key drivers for the project are more about the life impacts for these women than the architecture. Secure, affordable, stable housing that provides a safe haven and encourages growth and independence. So this is the site context, largely low density suburban houses. And here is our site, a typical suburban block. And looking at the site context, the built form is offset from the boundary to ensure more affordable construction. And so that the design of the units is more easily adaptable to other sites and orientations. We've aligned the, front, the built form with the adjacent houses on the street as we were and we were keen to ensure the frontage was not dominated by cars. By aligning the car access to the south, we're able to wrap open space around the northeast, giving solar access to private open space and all of the unit's living spaces. The units are seen as a repeatable module that could share some party walls. A key consideration was where to locate the necessary car parks and entries and access to the units. We wanted to provide affordability, uh, the opportunity for neighbourly connections and thought if we located some car spaces together, they could be more flexible and useful than just for cars. The car space created an opportunity for small shared courtyard spaces with the unit entries nearby. Small seats, paving and planting elevate the nature of these spaces and turn a car space into a potential covered veranda essentially doubling the amount of open space for each unit. The shared access areas also provide some increased security. Small pop-up elements provide an opportunity to catch some sunlight into the living spaces and also break up the large combined single storey volume. Solar panels and water tanks ensure ongoing affordability and sustainability. And we see the front yard as another shared communal space that provides opportunity to connect with other residents and the larger community. Small things make a difference and a seat is provided on the street as a spot to stop or wait for a lift. Here's that seat and the shared front garden. We've provided raised planter beds for each dwelling. We hope this space will not only provide some herbs and veggies, but also a sense of community and connection to the street. And while only one unit addresses the front, we like how the roof form identifies each unit and breaks down a single mass. The scale sitting well in the neighborhood. We've invested quality in the details while still being affordable. For example, bricks, but no steel lintels. Here's that Northeast elevation. And you can see here the front elevation with the roof form that translates in section into small but generous interior spaces. 
that each have a view of the sky. You can see here the arrangement of four units on the site, essentially a repeated L-shaped unit design. Zooming in now, you can see the layout. We've located the second bedroom adjacent to the living space with an operable wall to provide more flexibility in its use. It can be used as a study or for a guest, a grandchild, or even a carer. And also importantly, as an expanded living space. Oh, you can also see the car space as we imagine it becoming an outdoor covered space. While it was important for each unit to have privacy and clear ownership divisions, we hope that these spaces can engender neighbourly connections and the opportunity for incidental interactions. We also liked that there is security and support in the view of each other's front doors. We photographed this project the day after planting, so we and we look forward to returning one day to see the wisteria as prolific as we imagined. Here you can see that space in its two modes. And here's the internal space with the high pop-up volume catching the sunlight with the second bedroom through this operable wall. And you can see it opened up in the mode of expanded living space. Here's one of the small courtyard gardens. While small, each unit has its own shed, a specially selected fruit tree and a spot to sit in the sun. Beyond this site, we have designed the units to be able to adapt to other sites and orientations. You can see here the pop-up can be rotated to ensure sunlight can be brought into living spaces no matter what the site condition, facing to the front or side as needed. This is an early render we did of the project. And in many ways, one of the huge successes of this project is that with minimal involvement from us on site and a targeted documentation package, it looks a lot like what we had imagined. We're pleased that the design is durable enough to stand up to a typical outer suburban home builder that fancies himself as offering design and construct. Poor Rob the builder, I think he's happy to see the back of us. We hope this durability is something that talks to the potential for scalability and hopefully expands the opportunity this project has to make a difference to older women's lives. Lastly, while our role was in some ways totally minimal on limited fees and scope, in others it was expanded beyond the role of the architect. We became the advocate for the project and have, in doing so have lent on favours from consultants and suppliers to ensure design and material quality is embedded in the project. Sometimes even doing a few things ourselves. Thanks.